Welcome back to the workshop. In today's video, we're gonna be making this very nice dog gate. This dog gate is very versatile. It can go in front of a door, any size staircase. It can stop a dog from going into the garden because it basically is a little bit like an accordion. It opens and closes to whatever size opening you want to block off. It could also be a baby gate to go on top of the stairs to stop your baby from falling down the stairs. So let's get straight into it. I've got some lovely English oak here for this build. This is an inch and a half thick. I've got two wider boards here. That is gonna be for the top and bottom rails of the gate. And these four longer boards are gonna be for the banisters. So before every project starts, what I do is I look at the grain of the wood and see what part of the board I want each component to come from. So I notice with these wider sections, the grain has a subtle curve in this direction and it's a bit straighter on the top. So the top section of this board is gonna be perfect for the bottom rail. But with this section, with the curvy grain, I'm gonna make that the top of the gate where the arc is gonna be, this section of the gate here. So before I cut the two components out of this board, it's a good idea to cross cut it first so then you know both components are the exact same width. So I've cross cut all the pieces and I've drawn an arc on this board. I just bent a ruler and drew a line. So now I'm gonna cut this on the bandsaw. I'll sand back to the line and then use this as a template for the next arc so they match perfectly. So I've just sanded this edge on the belt sander and I'm now gonna use that as a template to mark the other gate arc. So I'm gonna cut that on the bandsaw and sand it again. So I've cut both arcs and they'll be positioned at the top of the gate like this and they're gonna be hinged so you can adjust the, the opening of the gate. Now with this off cut, that's gonna be the bottom rail of the gate. So I'm just gonna trim this section off on the bandsaw. I'm gonna keep this off cut because that's gonna help me when clamping up the gate at the end, that's gonna give me a flat reference surface for the clamp instead of the clamp clamping onto this arc and bruising it. So the top and bottom of the gates are now cut and I've also cross cut the banisters. So now I'll rip these boards into banisters on the bandsaw and then I'll feed them through the thicknesser to remove the bandsaw marks. So I've clamped one of the gates up. So now what I'm doing is I'm using a pencil and I've got a few dominoes here to mark out the domino placements in all these joints. So marking out dominoes is really easy. I'm just using a square here and just with a pencil marking out the center on both components. And then later when I'm using a domino, I reference the fence off that mark and I can drill directly in the middle. Now it's time to cut the dominoes. I'm just gonna lift these bench dogs up and that's gonna give me something to push against when I'm dominoing. It's so easy dominoing when you have a stop that you can push up against. You don't need to clamp the wood down to the workbench. You can just quickly get the next piece and then just hook it onto a stop and push into it. It makes dominoing very quick. Now all the joints are cut, you could glue up the gate right now, but I'm gonna add another design element. I'm gonna run these center banisters through the planer and narrow them a bit. And that's gonna inset them from the main frame and create a nice design feature. A bit like how the center panel of a frame and panel door is inset or staircase banisters are thinner than the hand railing. It adds another shadow line, another element, and isn't just you know a flat gate. 
Now the reason I've done it in this order is it's a lot easier cutting the domino slots when everything is on the same plane instead of having to adjust the fence height on the domino. So now I know that all the domino mortises are cut in the exact right location, I can run these center banisters through the thicknesser an even amount on each side so they still remain in the center of the gate. And then I'm gonna add a decorative chamfer on the router table. So let's do that. So I'm at the router table, I've just added a chamfer bit into the router and I've added these two stops. These two stops are equal distance from the center of the router bit and that's gonna allow me to make a repeated stop chamfer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the piece of wood in, referencing off that first stop, ease the wood into the router bit, then move the piece of wood all the way to the other side, slowing down as I reach that next stop because I don't want it to chip out as I'm releasing the piece of work. As soon as I touch that second stop, I'm gonna release the work piece, turn it 90 degrees, do the exact same thing and repeat it until I have a chamfer all the way around the post. It's gonna be easier to sand these internal parts before the gate is glued together, especially getting into these tight corners. So I'm gonna do that now. Now for the exciting part, gluing the whole thing together. I'm not gonna add a lot of glue on the center banisters because they're in set. I don't want a ton of squeeze out because I won't be able to use an orbital sander to sand off the glue squeeze out. So on the outside posts, I'm adding glue on this face because if there's any squeeze out, I can sand that off with the orbital sander. You don't need to add a lot of glue here. If the domino is stuck well enough inside the mortise, you don't need a lot of glue on the face and it saves a lot of time later on from having to clean up any squeeze out. And I mentioned it's a good idea to keep this off cut from the bandsaw because that's going to help with clamping. While I'm gluing this up, if you're interested in supporting the channel for free, then I've got an affiliate link in the description of all of my videos, which goes to Axminster Tools. And whatever purchase you make, whether it be clamps, sandpaper, a machine, I'll get a small cut of your purchase with no extra cost to you. So if you appreciate the free content I do, then I'd really appreciate it if you uh, use that link in my videos when purchasing tools from Axminster. If you ever find that dominoes are really hard to drive into the mortise, then you could rub either side on a block plane and just take off a little bit of material. Or you can put your dominoes in a coffee mug and pop it in the microwave for about 10, 15 seconds. And that will literally shrink the dominoes a tiny amount. So then they slot into the mortise really easily. Just add a bit of glue into these mortises. So it's the next day and the gates are fully glued together. Before I cut the mortises for the hinges and add a chamfer around the edges, I'm gonna sand the gates.
Okay, so now it's time for one of my favorite parts of any build, and that is installing the hinges. I love putting them into the mortise I cut and sort of joining the whole project together, especially on my boxes. Now I'm gonna stick these felt feet on the bottom, so if the client decides to put it on a hard floor, it won't scratch. <laughs> 